Hello guys, today I want to partly reply to a comment, to a question from Bashar. He suggested, a really good suggestion, to talk more about PHP syntax in Laravel, about PHP stuff like type hinting, like nullable types, and more stuff that we could use in Laravel. But a lot of people don't do that, especially if they learn PHP in older times, like PHP 4, or PHP 5. And with new syntax appearing, they didn't adopt that syntax, they didn't really use it, and don't see the values. So in this video, we will try to transform one function, one service function, it could be whatever function, with some fancy or not so fancy anymore PHP syntax. And let's see how to make this code more readable and understandable for other developers that will work with this project or even ourselves in the future. So simple setup, simple function of get the service. It could be any data from the database. It's really simple. In reality, it could be more complex. And it is called from controller, which is with one parameter of project that could be nullable. So basically get the service and show the data. Simple. And I will point out some things that could be improved here. First disclaimer about PHP versions. I will be talking about PHP 7.4 at least, and there are different types of syntax things that appeared in various 7 point something versions. And you can Google which syntax appeared when, but I would assume that you have at least PHP 7.4 because as it is shown in PHP documentation, 7.3 is already out of active support. So I encourage you to update to at least 7.4 or even better to PHP 8. So first thing is really simple outside of that syntax thing. Do you see the project variable as very clear? What should be passed here? In the routes is just report project. What is the project? Is it project name? Is it project ID? Is it project number? Whatever. So I would suggest to name the variables first so they would be perfectly clear. So project ID here, project ID here, and in the web here as well, project ID, and also service project ID and project ID here everywhere. So that already improves the code quite a lot and tells exactly what the variable does. And also in addition to that, we may type hinted like this. So integer project ID and then integer here project ID. It may be one or another. So it could be int project and that's already an improvement, but I guess this is the most readable option. But then we have a problem if we pass null value. In the controller, we accept integer, but it may be null by default. And in the service, if we pass the null, so by default, this report accepts like ID one, but if we don't pass anything, then the error would be thrown. The controller would work fine because we assign null value here. But in the service, there's another way to assign new value. Instead of doing this, you can do question mark here which means it accepts integer or null. And if we refresh, now no error, the function works well. It doesn't have any data in my database. I didn't even see the data because it's not the point. The point is whether to launch that function successfully or not. And it even helps the readability. So this means project ID, number, and maybe null. Next, what the function returns. It's not that useful in this case example of really simple function. It's kind of seen that it's get collection, but if the function is like 50 lines of code, it's pretty hard to read. So what helps is what the function returns. In this case, it returns collection, eloquent collection. I think it's this one, eliminate support collection. So basically the thought is another developer in a year or so, just from the header of the function from naming should clearly understand what that function does, what are the parameters and what are the return types without even reading the implementation. It's kind of like API documentation for future developers. It's function documentation. And a good practice is to stick to that documentation, stick to your own promise. So if you promise that this method should return collection, it should return collection. If something goes wrong inside the method, like whatever, if project ID is zero, then return false, for example or return null. That is not a very good practice. Of course, it depends. There is no rule of thumb or return null. By the way, did you know that you can do return null and then also do a question mark here? So that may have more sense because maybe there's data or there's null. But generally, if your function returns something unexpected, then you should probably throw an exception. So in this case, if project ID zero, you should throw new exception, for example, or your own exception with message, something like that. And then your controller should catch that exception with try catch. 
But then in this example, you don't violate your own promise. The actual function returns the collection unless something bad happens. And then there's an exception, which is expected from the controller. Also, a new thing that appeared in PHP 7.4 is typed properties. So inside of the class, you may have a property of project or public project, for example, or private project, whatever, public project or project ID in our case. And you may assign a type. So int project ID, then you may have, for example, constructor, construct, which is accepting project ID, then assigning this project ID to the parameter. And then in all of the functions inside of that class, you may skip this one and work with this project ID. So something like this. Actually, then we don't need use here. And then we may pass project ID directly in the service. So project ID here, and then the actual method doesn't get any parameters. So in this case, from 7.4 PHP version, you may assign the type to any properties of the class. And finally, I want to show you two cool things with PHP 8. For that, I will show you a blog by brand stitcher.io, which I recommend to read for all the new features in PHP. So PHP 8 has named arguments. For example, if your function has three parameters, you may do something like this. It allows you to skip unnecessary parameters if they are with default value. So in this case, for example, you have a function with like seven parameters and you may pass only two, which is not necessarily first or second. You may choose which parameters to pass. So instead of doing this, you can do something like this. So this came in PHP 8. And then another thing is union types. I'm not a big fan of that because as I told before, you should stick to your own promise and that promise should be integer or float. I don't think it should be both. It kind of adds some inconsistency, but if you have such situation, you can in syntax return more than one possible class. So these are short examples of features that I notice people don't use as much. Maybe they should. I hope it helps. If you have any more examples, shoot them in the comments. Or maybe if you disagree with some of my opinion or with my example, it's a really simplified example. But still, if you have something to add to my opinion or you disagree with something, it's totally normal. It's only my opinion. So shoot in the comments. And also you may enroll in one of my courses at laravelldailyteachablecom 17 courses at the moment with new courses to come in 2021. And generally check out the three products that you can see on screen to support this channel financially and see you guys in other videos.